Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at the cigar, something every man I believe should do. So why don't we get right into it? What we're looking at here on our table is a setup, basically, of everything a guy needs for smoking a cigar, really. What I want to touch base on in this video is really how to buy a cigar, what you should be looking for, how to cut a cigar, how to light a cigar, and finally, how to smoke a cigar. So let's start off with the basics. Some things to consider. Most guys, especially my age, they don't know very much about cigars. And the best place that you're gonna learn about it is not really through your own research nearly as much as going to your local tobacconist and seeing what they have to say. Um, take a step inside their humidor, which usually contains numerous cigars, if not, you know, maybe thousands, and ask them what they think. Maybe they think that you should go for something lighter or something uh, full body. You never know because they're gonna be the ones that have the most expertise. Uh, just remember to keep a few things in mind. Coloring of a cigar does not necessarily dictate how strong it is. I've seen some very light colored cigars on the outside be very, very strong. So just be careful and like I said, if you're new to it, talk to your tobacconist or somebody who knows. Um, two things before I get started to take note of when getting into the world of cigars. One is there are two measurements. One is strength and one is boldness. Now, what is the difference between the two? Because many people get them confused. The first is strength. Now, strength is really the nicotine content that's inside the cigar itself. This is the thing that will give you probably the buzz that you'll feel, um, similar to lightheadedness. And the boldness is speaking to the flavor of cigar, the depth of flavor. So something that says that it's medium full is going to be stronger in flavor than something that is lower in, uh, in body. Um, to dismantle a cigar, really, let's, let's look at what makes up a cigar. You have three major pieces, the binder, the filler, and the wrapper. So starting from the outside, let's start with the wrapper. Wrappers are darker in color for the most part. They are what make up a lot of the flavor of the cigar. Uh, it is the outermost part, and most of wrappers come from places like Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, I mean Cuban cigars, of course, Cuban, uh, Costa Rica, and even Mexico. And then you have on the second layer on the outside is the binder. The binder is what holds the inside together. And really it's made up of a lot of thicker leaves, hardier leaves that congeal better. And the innermost part of the cigar is actually what's called the filler. And this is where the majority of your cigar comes from. You have, um, you know, all different types of blends and that's what master blenders do. They'll take flavors or uh, tobacco leaves from different regions, either around the country or in different areas entirely, and blend them together similar to what a scotch uh, maker does or, or even a wine blender. Um, so those are the three pieces of the cigar. And uh, so why don't we get right into it? Uh, what I'm holding here is one of my favorite go-to cigars. This is, a, uh, this is a Padron 1964 anniversary series. Uh, this is an Exclusivo that's talking about the size and the shape of the actual cigar. Um, it is measured, all cigars are measured by ring gauge and length. Now ring gauge is the size that you see right here that goes where your mouth goes. Ring gauge is measured in 64ths of an inch. This happens to be a 50, which means it's 50 64ths of an inch, which is a, about a normal size. The length on this is actually five and a half inches. Um, typically, this is a little bit longer than what I'm uh, accustomed to with something also known as a Robusto, which sticks between four and a half to five inches in length, but a very similar ring gauge. Now, what are the pieces to actually getting your cigar going and being lit? You have two major pieces to consider when purchasing a cigar and how you're going to go about lighting it. The first being the cutter. Now. The cutter I always recommend and most tobacconists recommend is a guillotine cutter. It looks something like this. This is a cutter made by a company called Palio. I couldn't recommend it any more than I do. I love this cutter. It's never given me problems. Other cutters to consider are scissor cutters or punch, or you can even bite a cigar. That's what they used to do back in the day when they didn't have the option to have a cutter like this. The other thing to consider is how to light a cigar. Now, there are three major ways to light a cigar in the cigar world today. You have your butane torch lighter. This one is made by ST DuPont. It's called a MaxiJet. 
and it's a single torch flame. This is really good on the golf course because it is nearly wind resistant. And it's very, very, very hot and odorless. That is the key, it is odorless. The other two options, let me put this over here, are cigar matches. And these are long matches. These aren't like your typical matches that you get at a, uh, at a normal just smoke shop, right? These matches are very long in length and there's quite a bit that come in a package. You have uh, quite a bit more time with these to light your cigar. This is very important as you'll see a little bit later on. Um, as well as they are odorless and the ends of them are not dipped in any sort of flammable material. And last is something that most young cigar smokers have no idea about. It's known as cedar spills and they sell these in a lot of tobacco shops. Um, they're long pieces of cedar wood that usually come off of the bottom of a cigar box when you buy a box of 20 or 25 cigars. And this is what uh, the bottom of a cigar uh, box actually looks like. They're just long pieces of cedar. And how you can light a cigar is you can actually just break these off and use this similar to a how you'd use a match. You'd have to light this first, but it is um, something that is probably the purest way to light a cigar. So why don't we get into cutting it, lighting it, and I'll show you how to smoke it. So my ashtray just broke. So we're gonna actually use another one of these cups that happens to have my whiskey in it to catch my uh, debris from cutting this Padron. On all cigars, you're gonna see something at the very top that looks like it's a little ridge, sort of um, perpendicular to the length of the cigar itself. This is known as the cap. You don't wanna cut below the cap. You need to stay above this because you run the risk of actually the whole thing unraveling. And that's not something we want. So we're gonna cut right above the cap, somewhere around here. And what you wanna do is put your cigar in the guillotine and you can actually hold it kind of close and kind of clamp it down in the guillotine to make sure it's a good place to start. Make sure you know where you wanna sit with it. And then as soon as you're ready, you do it hard, just like that. Pretty, pretty good cut. And if you need some more draw, you just go a little bit thicker. There you go. So I don't like the biggest of draws. As you can see, this is kind of uh, a, a, a tight draw because you're gonna need to pull in more smoke. I'm, I'm okay with that. Actually, I could go a little bit more. So I go a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. Lick it down, get rid of some of that excess. That is a perfect cigar cut. Got a little bit of debris everywhere, but what the hell. Put that off to the side. Perfect draw. All right, so now let's get into lighting it. For the case of this video, I'm gonna show you how to light with a butane torch and possibly finish it off with either a, uh, you know, one of these matches or possibly one of the cedar spills that I kind of created myself. So I'm gonna take my maxi jet torch and torches come in all different types, triple torch, quadruple torch, whatever. Really it's hot enough to burn. And what you wanna do is you're going to basically keep the end of the cigar, known, known as the foot of the cigar, pretty far away from the flame, because all you wanna do is toast it and rotate the cigar at the same time. So this is all you're gonna do. As you can see, I'm staying pretty far away. And all you wanna do is toast. I'm actually even too close. You just wanna toast and rotate. And you can see that it is not charring it. Most people run this, run, make the mistake of charring it. And look at that smoke it produces. Just a little bit, it's warm. Okay, so now that you've pretty much toasted the entire thing, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it to your mouth, because now it's warm, and then you're going to suck in a tiny bit into your mouth, not into your lungs, and then light it again. So watch, it's toasted, and here we go. And blow it out. So the last bit of this is really to discuss how to smoke a cigar. Most people don't know how to smoke a cigar. They'll go right through it. If anything, a cigar of this size should take anywhere from an hour to an hour and 15, an hour and 20. You wanna let it rest. So for beginner cigar smokers, I would say 
definitely only smoke or take in a little bit of a draw once a minute. That seems about right. Um, another thing to consider when you're smoking a cigar, keep your nasal passages open. You'll hear other people talk about retrohaling. Don't do that, forget it. Just keep your nasal passages open. And even when you're taking in a little bit of the cigar, take in a little breath almost with your nose. You'll absolutely taste more of the cigar itself. And this takes a little bit of practice without, you know, completely inhaling at all. Um, other things to consider real quick to close out this video, because I know you're wanting to get to your cigar and smoke. Uh, great pairings include whiskey. I know some people drink cognac, some people drink B&B. &B. Um, I prefer whiskey. Uh, and lastly, this is not cigarette smoking. Do not ash your cigar for two reasons. You want your ash to go as far as it can without it falling off for two reasons. One, it's just a respect and a testament to the scar maker themselves. And two, the ash serves a purpose to basically insulate that cherry for it not to go out while you're not taking in a draw. So just make sure that you are um, conscientious to not ash it being a beginner cigar smoker. Other than that, guys, have fun with it. Uh, just taste a lot of different things. That's my recommendation. I love Padron, and I'll put down in the description some of my favorite cigars. Um, and we're going to be doing some more of these cigar videos, so just uh, stay tuned. Maybe we'll do some premium blends or Davidoffs or even some Cubans. But uh, thanks for coming along, guys. We're, uh, we're excited to have you here.